So the first crock pot meal we're gonna be starting off with is this super easy way of making carnitas. So I turned it into carnitas tacos. So here's everything you're going to need for this crock pot meal. You're going to need a boneless pork shoulder roast. For seasoning, you'll need cayenne pepper, cinnamon, cumin powder, chili powder, oregano, and then salt and pepper, and then a few garlic cloves. The juice of a few oranges if you have larger oranges you can do two if you have smaller ones i did four here um, you'll need one lime and then some low sodium chicken broth you can also use coke or pepsi or even beer in place of the chicken broth but i decided to go with the chicken broth on this one the first thing i did was mix my seasoning in a bowl so i could rub it all over my pork roast so i did three teaspoons of salt two teaspoons of pepper one teaspoon of oregano one teaspoon of chili powder one and a half teaspoons of cumin half a teaspoon of cinnamon and half a teaspoon of cayenne pepper and then got my roast and I dried it really well with some paper towels and then I got it into my crock pot where I rubbed all of that seasoning that I had just mixed up all over on both sides I then took my garlic and I got about five cloves and I smashed them with my knife and then I threw those into the crock pot as well I then moved on to juice my oranges right into the crock pot. So you'll need about three quarters of a cup of juice. So that's about two large oranges, like I said earlier, or three to four smaller oranges. And then I juiced one lime. I then added in one can of low sodium chicken broth, and then I got the lid on my crock pot and I cooked it on high for seven hours. So I love making pickled red onions when I do carnitas tacos. I think it complements it so well. And so if you wanna make some with your tacos, here's everything you're going to need. You're gonna need a red onion, some garlic cloves, white vinegar, salt, sugar, and water. And then you're gonna need some type of jar to store it in. You can use a Tupperware. I like to use a mason jar with a screwed on lid because it just makes for easy storing because these can actually stay up in the fridge for up to two weeks. Um, so I first sliced my onion. So I did about three quarters of a red onion and I thinly sliced it. I added the onion into my mason jar and then I added in two smashed garlic cloves. I then moved over to my stovetop where I got a small saucepan over medium to high heat and I added in equal parts of vinegar and water. So one cup of white vinegar and one cup of water. I then added in two tablespoons of salt and about three tablespoons of sugar and I whisked it all together. So I'm just cooking this until the sugar and salt mixture completely dissolve. And once it does, I turn the burner off and I let it cool completely. And then once it was cooled, I poured it into the mason jar as I spilled some, of course. And then I got that mason jar into my fridge. So you'll know that these onions are done once they're light pink in color and tender and because mine are thinly sliced it only took about two to three hours if yours are on the thick side you're definitely gonna need more time so halfway through the roast cooking I ended up flipping it just so that the top of the roast could also soak up all of that liquid in the crock pot once the roast was all done I re removed it from the crock pot and I shredded it with two forks and then I just removed any large chunks of fat I then moved the pork to a cookie sheet and I poured some of the extra juice from the crock pot all over the shredded meat I then got the cookie sheet into my oven under the broiler for just a few minutes just until it was lightly crispy. So once it was done in the oven, I did pour a little bit more of the juice from the crock pot. This part's optional. I just wanted ours to have a little more juice when I dish this up for the tacos. And then I moved on to make a sauce for the tacos. So I just did a third cup of sour cream and then about a tablespoon or so of some tapatio. And then I also toasted our corn tortillas. So here's everything I used to make our tacos. I did some queso fresco cheese, some cilantro, sliced lime, the pickled onions that I had made, and then the spicy sour cream sauce.
And there you have it, the easiest way to make carnitas tacos. I always love making it this way. It's so quick, it cooks all day long. You come home, you have to just finish it off with a few things and you have delicious carnitas tacos for your family. My family always loves it and what's great too is that if you have extra meat, you can put it in a food saver bag and freeze it for another time. It freezes really well. The next crock pot meal I have to share with you is one of my favorites and it's marry me chicken. The sun-dried tomatoes with the cream sauce, it's so good. So here's everything you're going to need for this meal. You need some chicken breast, some cornstarch, some heavy whipping cream, some minced garlic, some butter, some sun-dried tomatoes, some chicken broth, and I like to use the low sodium chicken broth, onion powder, Italian powder, smoked paprika, and then salt and pepper to taste. And then I like to season my chicken breast with some of the Kinder seasoning, which is just salt, pepper, and garlic. But if you don't have that, just use salt and pepper. The very first thing you want to do is make sure to season your chicken breast before you start your sauce. So just season with some salt and pepper or if you have another seasoning you like, you can do that as well. It's no problem. And then I got a bowl and I added in 1 3 quarters cup of low sodium chicken broth with 3 tablespoons of cornstarch and whisked it together really well. And then I added in 1 tablespoon of minced garlic, 1 cup of heavy cream, and then all of my seasoning. So 2 teaspoons of Italian seasoning, 1 teaspoon of smoked paprika, 1 teaspoon of onion powder, and then some salt and pepper to taste. And then I mix that all up really well. I then moved on and got my chicken breast added into my crock pot where I added in two tablespoons of butter that I had just cubed up and sprinkled all over the chicken evenly. And then I added in a third cup of sun-dried tomatoes that I just gave a good rough chop to. And then I poured my creamy liquid mixture all over that. And then I put the lid on and I set the, it to cook on low for six hours. So just before I was ready to serve dinner, I did cook up some pasta that I served alongside this chicken recipe. And if you don't want to do pasta, you could do rice, you can even do egg noodles. If you want a lower carb option, you can even do cauliflower rice. I then removed the chicken from the crock pot, I poured in my cooked pasta and I mixed it all up. And then I just served it with the chicken on top of the pasta with some steamed broccoli. I topped some Parmesan cheese right on top of that chicken and pasta. And there you have it. This turned out so good. My family always loves this meal. It's such a good comfort meal. The next crock pot meal I have to share with you is one of the easiest dinners to make and it's barbecue chicken sandwiches. I actually chose this meal to make this night because I had caught a cold from my girl so I wasn't feeling well and I wanted something super easy to make. This was, and it was so good. So here's everything you're going to need for this meal. You're going to need some chicken breast, some of your favorite barbecue sauce. I love this Kinder's Gold one, apple cider vinegar, some onion powder, brown sugar, salt and pepper. I just like to use the my favorite seasoning, which is the Kinder seasoning in place of salt and pepper. And then you'll need some rolls. So the very first thing I needed to do was just season my chicken breast. So like I just said, I like to use the Kinder's Blend seasoning, just salt, pepper, and garlic. If you don't have that seasoning, don't worry. You can use your favorite seasoning you like to use for chicken breast. If you don't have anything, then just use salt and pepper. That'll work out just as good. And then I moved on to get my barbecue sauce ready. So I had a partially used barbecue sauce, so I wanted to add to it, but I also wanted to spruce it up a bit. So with the barbecue sauce, it was about one cup or so of barbecue sauce, maybe a cup and a half. And I mix it with two tablespoons of apple cider vinegar, one tablespoon of brown sugar, and about two teaspoons of onion powder, and about two tablespoons or so of minced garlic. And then I mixed it all up and I poured that all over the chicken breast that I had added into my crock pot. I got the lid on the crock pot and then I just set it on low to cook for five hours. So once the chicken was done, I just shredded it directly in the crock pot with two forks, super easy, and then it could soak up all of that delicious barbecue sauce. And then I moved on to get my sandwiches ready. So I sliced my rolls, and then I used provolone cheese that I had put on top of the bottom part of the roll. You can use any type of cheese really that you like with this. And then I put a generous amount of some shredded chicken on top of the cheese, so it can kind of help melt the cheese. And then I topped it with some dill pickles, and lastly, some shredded iceberg lettuce.
This crock pot dish always comes together so well and is one of my favorite go-to crock pot meals when I'm looking for something super easy yet delicious. So the last meal I have to share with you is corned beef and cabbage. And yes, I made this for St. Patty's Day. I always do it this way, so I thought I would share it because it's the easiest way to make this dinner. So here's everything I use for this meal. I use red potatoes, carrots, celery, onion, a pack of corned beef brisket, minced garlic and water, and then one small head of cabbage that's missing from this lineup of ingredients. So the first thing I did was chop up my veggies. So I did about 10 red potatoes, two cups of chopped carrots, one and a half cups of chopped celery, and one onion. I first got my onion and red potatoes into the crock pot and I sprinkled a teaspoon of each of some salt and pepper on top. And then I placed my corned beef brisket on top of those. And then I sprinkled this little seasoning packet that came with the corned beef. I'm sure that's completely optional if you don't wanna do it, but I like it on there. So I sprinkled that on top and then I put in the celery and the carrots on top of the corned beef. I then put the lid on and I set the crock pot to cook on high for about six hours. And about two hours before it was done, I did add in my cabbage at this point. So I cut my cabbage into large wedges and I just placed that on top. I put the lid on and I let it finish off for the last two hours. Here it is. I served this dinner with some of our favorite mustards for dipping and then a loaf of French bread and butter because it goes perfectly with this meal. I always love making this dinner in the crock pot. I used to do it in my pressure cooker, but that was a little bit of a process. It's the easiest way in the crock pot. All right, guys, that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed it. And if you're not already following, I would love to have you. So make sure to subscribe down below. I'll see you in my next one. Bye.